Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel where we learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I'm very happy to teach you and give you tips on how to play Brass Birmingham. It's gained a solid place in my top five games. This game makes me very happy because it is very much like a puzzle for me in the sense that it has a, such a range of possibilities. The rhythm is great, how each era gets more and more tense because you slowly start running out of cards. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. In Brass Birmingham, you play an English baron of industry, developing your production network and selling goods during the Industrial Revolution. The game is split in two eras, the Canal Era to start slowly and the Railroad Era to grow to your full potential. At the end of the game, the player who has built the best network and most developed industry will win the game. The first thing you notice is how pretty all the components are all the components, even the rules. You'll also notice there are two sides to the main board and the player boards. These are exactly the same in terms of gameplay. Just choose if you prefer the nighttime or the daytime design. For this game, I'm going to play with the daytime side and teach you a three player game. Take the merchant tiles corresponding to the number of players. These are for a two player game. Add these for three and then use all of them for a four player game. Randomly place one on each merchant space. These also depend on the number of players. As indicated here, you do not use Nottingham in a three-player game and also leave Warrington empty in a two-player game. But here, since it's a three-player game, I'm placing two in Warrington. Finally, place one beer barrel near each non-blank merchantile. Now each player takes one player mat. These show all the buildings you can build in the game. On the left side of each building is the cost to place it on the main board. Most buildings cost money and some of them also require coal or iron as shown here. On the right side of each building, you can see the building benefits once it's flipped. Here's the added income. Here's the points scored at the end of each era. And some buildings also allow you to score if you link to them. The buildings and resources are the core of Brass Birmingham. There are two types of buildings, those that produce resources and those that are used to sell goods. Let me start with explaining the ones that produce resources like coal and iron, which are used to place new buildings on the board or beer, which is used to sell goods. The coal mines here produce coal. Coal is at the heart of the industrial revolution and you will need a lot of it. That's why it always has to be transported by boat or by train, and that's why a new building that needs coal always needs a direct connection to either a coal mine on the map or a coal market. Iron was easier to transport, so when you need iron, you can take it from any ironworks on the map or the market. The iron and coal markets are these areas here on the board. During setup, place one cube of coal or iron in each space of the coal or iron market, leaving those with the dot empty. The way you manage beer is different, as you don't need it to produce buildings. You will use it when you sell goods from the other three buildings, the cotton mills, the potteries and the manufacturers. These are used to produce cotton, pottery or manufactured goods respectively. If you take the beer from one of your breweries, it can be anywhere on the map. However, if it's another player's brewery, you need to be connected to it before you can use it. Now that you better understand the buildings, pick one colour and place all the buildings on the mat as shown here and place the links next to the mat. Then place your income token, that's the one shaped like a coin, near the zero coin here and your point token on the zero here. Take all the character tokens and randomly place them on the turn order track. Pick the character you prefer, they're all the same. Now we need to prepare the action card decks. Separate the decks depending on the number of players like for the merchant tiles, these are for a two player game, these are for three, and these are for a four player game. Also separate these white cards, they are wild cards. There are two main types of cards in the deck, location and industry cards. Location cards show the name of the city and allow you to build a building on them even if it's not connected to your network. Industry cards let you build various types of industry building, but must be connected to your network. I'll explain how to build your network and your building later in this video. Shuffle the main deck and place it face down here. 
and also place the wild location here and the wild industry cards here. Give 17 pounds to each player. Finally, distribute eight action cards plus one additional card face down to mark each player's discard pile. Now we're ready to play. Using the turn order track, the first turn, players will take one action. All the other turns in the game, players can take two actions. Now, as shown on this card, players can choose between six actions. Let's have a look at the network action. As I mentioned before, Brass Birmingham is played over two eras. First, we'll play the Canal era and then the Rail era. But one of the main differences between these two eras is how the networks are built because it's a lot faster to build railroads than canals. So the link tiles allow you to expand your network. During the canal era, that side represents a canal link, which you place on an empty canal line. It could be here and here, but not here and here because there's an already another link. Use the other side during the rail era to place a rail link on empty railroad lines. There's something you need to remember about this game is that every time you play an action, you need to discard a card. Now, in the case of building a network, it doesn't have to be a specific location or industry card. You simply basically use one of your cards and you discard it to take the action. In the canal era, you can only build one link per network action. However, in the rail era, you can build up to two rail links per card you play. The cost of those is indicated here on the board. So to build a canal link, pay three gold. In the rail era, one link would cost five gold and one coal. These two links cost 15 gold, two coal and a beer and are built one after the other. And then place the link on the map. If it's the first thing you place on the map, you can place it anywhere. Otherwise, it needs to expand from your network. It means it needs to be either adjacent to one of your buildings or one of your links. Here it's important to understand the difference between your network and being connected. So while these links connect your industry to the market, they are not part of your network. Here the purple could add one link in these places, but not here or here. So in addition to connecting to your network, the link also needs to connect to a coal mine or a coal merchant before you can place it. In the real era, you can choose to build two links in one action playing one card, but potentially building four links in one turn. Each link needs to be connected to coal and the second one also needs one beer. You cannot take beer near the merchant's tiles for this. It has to come from a brewery. If it's from one of your own breweries, you do not need to be connected to it. However, if you take the beer from another player's brewery, it needs to be connected to the second link you place. That's all you need to know about the network action. Now, let's look at the build action. This is how you place buildings on the board and it's the only action where the card you play is important. A location card lets you place a building on that specific location, even if it's not in your network. Well, an industry card lets you build that specific industry anywhere in your network. If a city has both a double and a single type of building space available, you must build on the single type first. Here, for instance, you would need to build here, not there. Of course, if it's the beginning of the game and you have nothing on the board, you can use an industry card to build a matching industry anywhere you want. If you need coal to build a building, as indicated here, you must be connected to it. If you connect to a coal mine with coal on it, you must take the coal from it instead of from the market and it's free no matter who owns it. If you have a choice of multiple coal mines, you must choose the closest. If they are the same distance of links, you pick the one you want. As we have seen before, if the building you're building requires iron, you can take it from anywhere on the board. It doesn't have to connect. When any player empties a coal mine or an ironworks of its last resources, flip the tile immediately and raise the income of the player who owns that building. Coal mines can be emptied as soon as they're built if they connect to a coal market and there's enough demand in the market. For this, return the coal cubes from the mine onto the market and sell it at the price indicated. So for instance here, it would be two plus two plus one plus one for a total of six. Later in the game, coal mines or ironworks can also be emptied by a player. Whatever the reason, as soon as a coal mine or an ironworks is emptied of its cubes, it is flipped and the player who owns it increases its income by the corresponding number here. 
Finally, if there's no coal or iron on buildings on the board, you can buy it from the market. You need to be connected to the coal market and pay the price indicated on each row starting from the bottom. If the market is empty, pay £8 for coal or 6 for iron. Remember that in the canal era, each player can only build one building per town. Now, as the towns grow bigger in the rail era, players can build as many buildings as their space in each town. Also note that these icons with the blue half moon can only be built in the canal era and those with the black half moon can only be built in the rail era. Finally, there are two locations on the main board with no location name. These are to produce beer. Even with a wild location card, you cannot build there. You need either a beer industry card or a wild industry card. It means that you first need to connect your network to it before you can build. In this case, only one link is needed to connect all these three locations. You do not need two links. Another option is to overbuild which means that you build a higher level building on top of an existing building. To build on top of one of your buildings, it must be the same industry type. You still pay the normal cost and return the previous building to the box. Points and income already scored by the previous building are not lost. If there was coal, iron or beer on the existing building, return it to the supply, not the market. You can overbuild any of your buildings. However, if the building belongs to another player, it can only be coal mines or ironworks. To be allowed to do so, there must be no resources corresponding to that type of building on the board, including the market, and that almost never happens. Now, let's look at the next action, the develop action. You use the develop action if you have to, or if you want to discard some of the lower buildings you have on your player mat. Discard one card from your end and return one or up to two buildings to the box. Note that the buildings with that icon here cannot be developed. You will have to build it. Each building costs one iron, which you can take from anywhere on the board or buy from the market. Now let's have a look at how you can get wild cards using the scout action. You will want to use this when you want to build in a specific location or a type of industry and you don't want to wait or the cards have already been played. For this, you need to discard three cards. The first card is for taking your action. The other two are because they will be replaced by a wild location card and a wild industry card, which you take from the decks on the board. Note that you can only perform the scout action if you have no wild card in your hand. So you will have to play both of them before you can take another scout action. Now let's look at the sell action. This is where you're going to flip all your cotton mills and potteries and manufacturers. To sell goods such as cotton manufactured goods and pottery, you will need to be connected to one of the markets featuring the good you want to sell. If there's this icon on the top right corner, you will also need beer. Most buildings will require one beer and some two beers to sell their goods. If you're the first to sell to that merchant, you can use the beer available there. If you do so, put the beer barrel back in the supply and claim the corresponding bonus. Four points here, five pounds in Warrington, three points here and two income level at Oxford. And one develop action in Gloucester to remove one of the lowest level tiles on your player mat. If you cannot get the beer from the merchant, you need to get it from the board before you can sell. As we have seen before, you can take beer from your own brewery, even if it's not connected to the building. But if you're taking beer from another player's brewery, it must be connected to the building you're selling. Also note that you can sell more than one building per sell action, and it's actually a good idea. You can do this as long as you have enough beer for each building you're selling. The beer can come both from the merchant you're selling to or player breweries. Once you've sold the good, you flip the building on its black side. Progress your income level by the number of spots indicated here. The income doesn't go up following the income level steps shown by the coins, but like this, following the steps of the points, also, if you ever reach an income of 30, you can't go higher. Unlike coal mines, ironworks and breweries, where they're often flipped in another player's turns, the selling only happens in your turn. Now, let's have a look at the loan action. Often in the game, you will need to get more money. To do so, discard one card from your hand and move your income marker three income levels down to the highest space within that level. Then collect 30 pounds from the supply. Finally, it's easy to get mixed up when you first learn the game, so a useful tip is to play your cards in front of you like this. Always start each action by placing the card, then show the building or action you want to take, place the cost of that action on the card. 
Then proceed to the next action exactly the same way. At the end of your turn, place all the money spent on your turn order track. Remember that you can take the same action twice. You can even pass, but even if you pass, you still need to spend a card. Now, once all players have taken their two actions or one action for the first turn of the canal era, it's time to resolve the end of round. Start by comparing the money each player has spent that turn. The player who has spent the least will play first next turn. If players have spent the same amount, the relative turn order remains the same, like here. Return the money spent to the supply, then give each player their respective income. If a player has negative income, they pay money instead. If they don't have enough money to pay, they need to sell one building, not a link, and remove it from the main board. It is sold at half its building cost rounded down. That building goes back to the box. You cannot sell more buildings than required by your shortfall. If you don't have enough buildings to cover the shortfall, pay one victory point for each pound you owe. Finally, give two action cards from the supply to each player and you're ready for a new round. If there are no more cards in the deck, players play four more turns until they run out of cards. Then they not only resolve the turn order track and income, they also score points. Start by scoring your links. Count these icons on all flip buildings that your links connect to. So here, this link would score nine and here, five victory points. Score all the victory points shown on your flip buildings. Three points here and here and four points here. Remove all level one buildings from the board and return them to the box. Keep the buildings level two or higher in play. Level one buildings still on the player mat remain there too. Replenish the beer on each empty merchant. Then you distribute eight cards again and we are ready to start the rail era. We've seen how links differ in that you can build two at a time. Now keep in mind that you may still have some buildings on the board and you can expand your network from those locations. Also note that you cannot build level one buildings anymore. You will need to develop, meaning discard those still on your player mat if you want to build higher buildings of that type, except the pottery. Also, in the rail era, you can build more than one building per city as they are bigger than in the canal era. The rail era ends exactly like the canal era, except you don't take the last income, but points for links and buildings are counted the same way. The player with the most points wins the game. In case of a tie, it's the player with the highest income. If they still tie, it's the player with the most money left. And if you still tie, you need to play again. My tip to win at Brass Birmingham are, coal is cheaper from the board, so connect to your mines or other players' mines. Links are very important, not only because you connect to call, but also because you make half your points from them. Pay attention to your network and connections because sometimes it's easy to miss a link. There is an element of luck in Brass Birmingham, so you need to be able to adapt depending on the cards you're getting and the cards you have discarded. It's often a good idea to get loans early as it's less punitive as later on in the game. If you need to, don't hesitate to use the blue and teal locations in a two or three player game. You don't have the cards, but you can build there. Keep in mind that beer will become increasingly more important in the rail era. So that's how you play Brass Birmingham. I think it's a brilliant game. It makes me very happy, as I said. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. And if there's a game you'd like me to teach, uh, leave it in the comments. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.